Uh, my name is Charles During, and I was pretty surprised to find that there's only a, a handful or less of videos that show how to process horns and make them all nice and shiny. And the ones that are out there, no disrespect to them, I've noticed they kind of make it harder than it has to be. But this video is to show you how I make horns like this look like this. Stick around and find out. I think the part that's most fun for me is to see just what's hiding under all this age and flakiness now. Sometimes you're going to find horns that look like this all over it and that's not a lost cause because with a 40 grit flap disc and 60, 80, 120 and 220 grit sandpaper you can make them look like this. Now some things I want to say about horns in general that you may come encounter is this right here on the on the end in some cases will be hide so you'll find that when you're doing the sanding process that this will become flimsy and that may not be the case on this particular horn but in some cases if you get a horn that's this raw you'll see an area that looks almost cream colored and sometimes it ends up being hide and you can basically bend that off uh, another thing to take in mind, not every horn is going to come out with this kind of, you know, in my opinion, gorgeous speckling. Now some horns will have this speckled look, some will, you can kind of get an idea with this one that it's going to be white. I, I'm thinking it might have a peach color similar to this one, that set right there. But there's really no way to know until you get get through it, and we'll we'll do that. But I wanted to explain some things about horns in general. Now, take in mind, they're pretty thin right here. Now the inside of this hasn't been cleaned yet. The thinnest part of the horn is going to be towards the wide end, and that is something to take note of when you're doing your process because you can go right through this stuff if you keep at it too long. Uh, it's going to be very thick at this end. And uh, this is usually the most fibrous part, uh, for lack of a better word. You can see, you know, the straight lines here that, that dictate those fibers. So those can be a bit of a booger to get off, but all of it is doable. It just matters with your patience. Here in a second I'll show you the, the actual methods and tools that I use to do it it is an involved process. The end of this one and all the ones I've done basically looked like that. It's just a process to go through and as you can see there's no sign of those fibers. And on some some horns if they're not like I was saying earlier if they're not all looking like that some of them you can't tell what it's going to look like underneath. On this one you can kind of get an idea, but sometimes it'll still surprise you. This is just a gorgeous example. It's not very often I get to find horns that look this beautiful. But going back to how thin they are, you can see how you can see my fingers through there. That is paper thin, basically. And, you know, sometimes you'll have to shape up and, you know, sand the, the edges here. And all of these I haven't cleaned the inside yet. And there's not really much of a process to that besides just scrubbing with like a long toilet brush or a bottle brush. But I just wanted to point out just how paper thin this stuff is on the very end. Basically every horn like these that you you find can be turned into something pretty. Now every now and then, let me see if I can find an example on one of these. Every now and then you're going to find a deep, I think this one has one. You're going to find, you know, stuff that the cattle have gone through, you know, just damage to the horns. Every now and then you'll find something like this. Now I used a little bitty wire wire wheel set up on a Dremel to get the gunk out of that so it at least somewhat matched. It didn't just stick out like a sore thumb. But the mate to this one had one of those flaws that you can't really get past because it had very deep cracks. And let me grab that right quick. And there's only so much you can do. It's not really your fault. Now somebody out there might know better than I do how to fix something like this. But I'll put on the screen what this looked like before I got to this point. But that is the best I could do. Going through all the, 
the flat wheel and the sanding grits there's just only so much you can do on something that's real deep now you can keep going but you you can completely alter the shape of a horn and if you want it to look good you don't really want to do that but let me go ahead and show you the flat disc I'm talking about now if my memory serves me correctly it is called a flat disc I could be wrong but it's called this particular brand is 40 grit Diablo steel demon grinding and polishing it is very aggressive but it's only going to dig in as much as you let it now again it's the first step I do straight out of the box so to speak it'll get this stuff off in no time even these deep ridges stuff like that I mean you're gonna see when I start actually demonstrating that it's just gonna skim that stuff right off the key to this is if you push too hard you know it's gonna make a big old divot in there this stuff's basically basically like giant giant fingernail material so I always start out with that but then after that you want to go through your grits of sandpaper because the key is to when you go from an aggressive grit you want to go down a little bit to another number I go from 60 to 80 to 120 to 220 now the ones you'll use the longest is going to be that 40 grit and the 60 grit I also use what are called micro mesh mini pads uh, they're often used for making pins on a lathe uh, they're the last step for getting a real good shine but now that I'm done talking about it here let me show you and one thing I obviously forgot to mention is that with these sandpapers it's the Velcro kind for a random orbital sander this one happens to be a black and decker another thing to take in mind when you do get to the random orbital sander part is you want to keep keep this thing moving and keep curling it around like this the reason why if you were to just keep doing it like this working on a tubular surface you're gonna warp the sanding pad and I learned that the hard way I tend to start on this end but you don't have to start on this end if you don't want to even if it's out of camera view you'll see me curling it like this and this is what I'm doing with my other hand now you do need to be very safe in this process bone or in this case horn dust is not good for your lungs so you want to have either something like this or a better respirator a dust collection wouldn't hurt I don't happen to have that but I do have this and I have a fan just behind my right shoulder that's blowing it away from me but there's still gonna be some in the air so I'm gonna have this over my face now one thing that's a big no-no that I don't want you to copy me on is when you're using something like a grinder these wheels have been known to come apart in my case this fell on the ground and I stepped on the guard and it crimped it so I am taking a risk doing this process without the guard on this but please don't be like me on that get a guard keep the guard on and use it protect your eyes and protect your lungs now it's very tempting to stay in one area too long and again as I mentioned earlier you can create a divot in this because it's basically like just large fingernails but about the only time I do short little strokes with, with the grip sander is here on the ends and it's not because this is dark brown like this but it's just because obviously that's the end of the horn number one it's safer to do small strokes but also because that's where most of that buildup tends to be so I tend to do the shorter strokes in this area up to about here and then you'll start seeing me go longer strokes.
that there's no sign of those little ridges that were there. And those ridges are the hardest parts. Once you get past that, the rest of it just a lot of skimming, and you'll see that. Now generally when I get to about here, sometimes a little further along, I'll turn the horn over. It's all in an effort to keep my hand on the other end of the horn. So I'm going to do this now. Now this gets closer to my leg with the grinder, so I'm going to put something under my leg to protect it. But you also want to be very careful at the end, unless you want a very pointed horn, that's up to you. But I try to just skim it like you saw me doing at the other end because I don't want a, a real sharp point at the end of these. I like them to look as natural as possible, at least as far as shape goes. You got you to keep it moving, and again, you don't want to stay in the same spot. If you ever see me going like this, I'm barely, barely, barely kissing the surface. But. I kind of got to keep going like this to keep it round while I'm still trying to get these fibers to not be as light. Still up close, you'll still see little zigzags here and there. I don't want to change the shape too much in this area. Although it's a thicker part of the horn, it's still narrowing and I don't want to alter the shape too much. So I'm just trying to skim it enough to get the, the brighter fiber colors off to show the dark underneath without altering the shape. Okay, so we're done with the 60 grit. I'm just going to brush it off. Even just to this point, you can compare it to what it looked like when we first started. But let me go through the rest of the grits and I'll do all that full speed. The 120 and 220 actually go very fast. Well, that is it with the uh, sandpaper. Now, I told you about the micro mesh pads. I'll put a link in the description of where you can get those. It's done the same way, except it's done by hand and done with water. These are the micro mesh pads I was telling you about. Now, there's a lot of uh, grits in there. And you might be thinking, how the heck am I supposed to know what order to do those grits? Well, luckily, they come with a color chart. 
that tells you what each grid is. You start from the top, then go to the next color pad, and boom, you're done. It goes all the way up to 12,000 grit. Now, that isn't mandatory. You can get away with stopping after that 220 grit uh, sandpaper. Now, they're in water because it's for wet sanding. And once that horn gets wet, you'll see how it's going to pop. So let me zoom out and we'll do that. That's not out. Once it gets wet, it gives you an idea of what it looks like when it's polished. Now you'll notice I go very fast because you don't have to spend a lot of time doing it. Just again, make sure you're covering up the whole surface area. And I also wear latex gloves, which whatever kind of gloves you want to wear, but I do that to keep my skin oils off of it once I've started with the mesh pads. And the same with when I'm doing the beautification. Like I said, once it gets wet, you'll get a big idea of what it's going to look like when it's polished, but I'm going to go through all the grits here. And see how it already starts to pop? I'm telling you, this, this is what, what I do it for because it looks so gorgeous when it's done. Of course, that water is not going to stay wet. <laughs> it, it'll dry up eventually, but you can already see I went from that dull black to this shiny, but let me go ahead and do the whole thing. I could probably be doing this in little circular motions, but I'm not going to. Really no need. Now, although you're seeing what it would look like being polished, I'll, uh, still tell you how I polish them or what I use to polish them because how to polish isn't really that hard at all. And as you go through each grit you'll you'll feel less resistance going across the surface of the horn because you're literally making it smoother just microscopically so to speak. Okay that was the first grit and I'll just speed up to go through the other grits. Now the only drawback to everything you've just seen is the customer that's getting this horn wants to polish it themselves, but I do have some other horns over here that I can show you that haven't been polished yet. But I'll still leave this one in view just for the sake of looking. Just drying this one off for now. And this is one horn done. Let me get the one that hasn't been polished yet. Well, there's two ways of polishing. If you want a little shinier sheen, which it, it won't work outdoors, it'll work, but it won't stay shiny, is a basically a baby oil soaked rag. And that's what I've been using lately, but you can also use uh, beeswax. Beeswax is quite commonly used. You put it on like you would any other kind of wax. This is the one I use. The quickest way, baby oil soaked rag, and it's done. But for the sake of visuals, uh, let's do it now. I'll put on some gloves. And I apologize if you feel deceived with this other horn, not getting to see it polished, but uh, the way it looked wet is the way it looks polished. But uh, I have to do what the customer wants, and the customer wants to polish it themselves. All right, now. Here we go. It doesn't have to be drenched in baby oil, but if you want it to be, it can be. There it is. There's another example of a flaw in a horn. There's just some of them that are too deep unless you want to change the shape of it. But let me zoom out and you have now seen the process I did on this one. I don't really need to zoom out, do I? But you saw the process all the way done on this one and this is what you would do right after that and I hope you'll learn something if you have any questions feel free to ask me if I don't know I'll find out and let you know I appreciate you watching and for anybody that as I said earlier if you're a subscriber to my channel for the my other usual content I have not stopped doing that I will be doing one in a few days as a matter of fact but I I saw the need to do a horn processing video and I hope hope it worked for y'all